Hi there, it's Christina Lovisa, and I am going to be working today with, ah, with knocking things off the wall. <laughs> Sorry about that. I just want to see if I'm live before I um, actually show anything because I am on my on my desktop today on my laptop because the last time that I did my video on my phone it was sideways and I wondered what the problem was and so I discovered later on that my phone actually is uh, broken so when I turn it I actually can't see so I'm going to come down here and see if I can see if anybody is live. It's just the comments. I'm not quite sure if I'm going to be able to interact with you guys. So if anybody is watching today, you'll have to let me know. Otherwise, I am just going to go ahead and start. And hopefully by the next time I do my live, we will have a new phone or the issue will be fixed because the last thing I need is for you guys to be sideways so let's see comments and moderation tools pardon me while I learn what I am doing okay I think this is where it's on not quite sure I've never done a live from my laptop before but we will see what happens so I apologize if you are trying to interact with me and I am not getting back to you it's just that for today I am on my my laptop my phone is not really working very well and so I always tend to be sideways so if I can't read you and you are commenting apologies um, I will check to see well, you'd think that the comments would just pop up wouldn't you anyway again apologies let me turn on my phone and maybe I could check that way if we actually have or if I have people I need to pay attention to there we go okay so I need to pause myself anyway again apologies there we go. Okay, so let's see. Michelle, hey, nice to see you. So it's funny because I actually can't see the comments on my laptop, but I can see you on my phone, so I'm going to have to watch two things. Um, and let's get started. So I'll put that down so I'll be able to read any comments. And here goes. Okay, so today I have the privilege of working with the self-adhesive decoupage print, which I was calling, I think I was referring to it as a poster print, of the hibiscus, the yellow hibiscus. And um, I really thought it would look great on the wall in this, this black frame. So... I actually took an old painting that was in here and it was just like a home sense painting and I ended up um, just adhering the, the uh, self-adhesive hibiscus print directly to it. So I covered that up and my print only went, I think I can show you, my print only went from here to here. So I had the sides which were... Um, which were had the previous painting on them so to adhere it all i did was peel and stick it's very very self-explanatory very easy and i used i can see my tool here i used the um the blue tool i'm sure it has a better name but to push any air bubbles out and make sure it was really adhered well and then to seal the edges and also to make that transition not so sharp right because i didn't want the image to um, appear really sharp right in front of me what i ended up doing was just um, applying a bit of a texture paste so you can get this from any company really in any art supply store um, this i don't even know where i got it but it's just a texture paste you can buy modeling paste you can buy any kind of a paste that's going to leave a texture behind and what I did was I just added it and I carried it over the side so that we wouldn't see that harsh line. 
So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to start to um, paint out this hibiscus. Now what I love about the this design really is that it's it's beautiful, it's loose, it's airy, it's got all the qualities that I would want in a painting of a hibiscus, but it's not my colors. So I'm really just going to start first by using it as a paint by number. And so you can see I've already started a little bit. What I did was I took each color and I said, okay, wherever that color is, so if it was like bright yellow, I'm going to turn it into white. So I'm taking my white on a brush, which is just a white chalk paint. And everywhere there is yellow, I'm just going to go over it with the white. So in a sense, this is a bit like a paint by numbers um, in that I didn't know how to paint a hibiscus before. And now using this brilliant, lovely design, I am able to pretend like I know how to paint a hibiscus, but I'm, I'm also not really following the lines like 100% because I really do want these colors to blend together and, um, and um, you know, just, just really be, be loose and incorporated into one another. And that's what I love so much about using these transfers as a base is that even though I don't, like I said, even though I don't know how to paint hibiscus necessarily, um, I could spend a long time trying to figure that out, or I could just make it my own by just following um, the existing lines that are there. Now, in this design, there's also a lot of um, the highlight or the transition line that are in purple. And I'm just gonna use a graphite stick. So this is just a regular, like a pencil, but a fatter one. And Let's go into the live chat so I can make sure I see you guys. Okay. If you have any questions, make sure you ask them. Um, so anyway, I'm going to go ahead and just sort of follow some of those lines pretty loosely. But at the same time, I need to, to make sure that I still know where the lines are at the end of the day. So I'm just going over the purple ones with the graphite, which is kind of a dark charcoal color, not necessarily um, a black. And I'm just going to paint in those areas. Anyway, so what I was saying before about not knowing how to paint a hibiscus is that this is like really quick and simple and lovely and it, it's, it's the type of art for people who just want to have something quick and, and, and beautiful and, you know, a sense of accomplishment. So you can actually, there you go. You can actually do something like this, get together with your friends and, you know, you can lead them in a paint and sip party all on your own without really knowing how to be the instructor or whatever. Just throw on a video or um, watch me i'm happy to share all my videos and tips and tricks with you for creating wall art it is one of my passions making sure that great art wall art is created every day so you can see i'm just still going in and i'm trying to not lose sight of those um of those purple marks so i'm just kind of putting them in at the same time and I'm not following exactly because, as you can see, it's it's much more of a loose paint by numbers than it is actually paint by numbers. Go in with my white. So now I have this other um, color, which is like, if you can see in the original one, there's some orange and some red. So I'm going to cover up the orange with um, kind of like a buttery yellow, creamy sort of color. Or maybe I'll mix it up a little bit and go a little darker yellow. Let's see how that looks. So I do have a couple of, of colors on hand that I'm working with. And even though the best laid plans are always to 
know what it is I'm going to do before my live. Sometimes as I'm painting, things change a little bit. So now I'm going in and I'm going to try and add this color where that orange was. Let me get that tube out of your way. And you can see what I'm doing is I'm just adding a bit of the detail back in. I'm really watching to see that, you know, I'm, I'm maintaining the petal look, but at the same time, I'm not really too concerned about following exactly. Okay, so now the greens. So you can see I put in, I went over top of some of the greens that they had before. And I added like a khaki green. And now I'm just going to go in with a little bit darker shade of green. And I'm just going to fill in some of those other areas. This truly is the beauty of, of having, like I said, having something ready made that you're able to follow and not be so um, concerned about what it's going to look like in the end. We're just keeping this very loose. And it's sort of hibiscus-like, which I think I really like. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add a leaf back here in green. Just to bring that color down, I'm going to add another one down here. May change my mind later, but for now they're great. Just a little pop. And while that's drying, now I'm going to add a bit of, you know, have to do the same lines in here just to make sure that it's not entirely foreign or, or um, new rather. There we go, add a few lines. Okay, so I'm going to deal with the background while this is somewhat drying a little bit. So to paint the background out, I have a decision to make. So this was done in red and blacks, and this side was darker than this side. And I think I'm going to mellow it out a little bit with a um, very neutral color. So this is called Zen and it is, I think it's called Zen. I'll have a look and confirm that. Um, yeah, it is Zen by Colorantic. And it's a really nice um, neutral. It's not a blue, it's not an aqua color. It's uh, definitely, there we go. Very peaceful, very calming, and it's not red. So even though I really enjoyed the red in the background, I think for this painting, I just want to make it a little more, a little more farmhouse, you know, just make it a little more appealing to my own house, my own color sensibilities. And even though, like I said, I was really enjoying the red, it was just a little strong for my decor. So everywhere that there was the background before, I'm just going to paint over it. And that is also one of the main reasons I love using chalk paints is that I'm able to get a really good amount of coverage with just one one application, one brush stroke. So you can already see that I'm going to need to adjust my colors a little bit because you can see that the um, the this Zen color is kind of a little bit clashing with the green that I chose. So I'll modify that afterwards once it's dry. But I think I like the Zen background. It's really pretty. It's really soothing. It does show to me also that I'm going to need some, some black or some darker color to anchor it a little bit because it does feel 
a little light at this point. I think because I'm missing the red already. And I really do apologize if you are trying to interact with me and I can't see it. Um, it is, when I put the uh, replay on and you guys are able to watch it later, feel free to give me any questions or any comments later and I will follow up. I just, I'm not quite sure, like I had mentioned earlier, how this works on your desktop. So, until I get a new phone, I am at the mercy of using my laptop as my live feed camera. So, it's so pretty already, isn't it? Like, it's, it was pretty before, um, and it had a lot of pop and a lot of punch before, but now it's just taking on a new life. It's becoming really calm and really quiet, really um, sedated. And I think I like that a lot. Now you can also see that my greens, these two greens are not matching. And also the way the flower was done before, because the print ended here, the image was cut off. So I just kind of penciled in. You can see that that also is sort of incorrect. I need a much bigger um, white area there. So I'll go back in with my white brush and I'm going to lay down some of the white with some of the, there we go, some of that sort of neutrally color. So yeah, that's looking much better. I think that could even go up a little bit. Put in some more white there. Okay, so that's looking better. And now I'm going to use my, my pencil. Okay, that's looking, that's looking pretty nice. But now I want to make those two greens more similar. So the green that I had chosen, I'm actually going to get a different green. And you're going to see that maybe what I'll do to un unify these two greens is I'll just mix them together. So I'll make my own shade of um, an amalgamated green, which will probably in the end bring those two together in the event that, you know, sometimes the emerald color shows and sometimes the more um, olive green shows or tacky green shows then at least they will have something um, like a common ground so let's see how that looks so I'm going to it's a bit more still a bit more um, emerald than I would like Let's see how that one looks. That's much better, but it's very dark. So I'm going to get a different brush because that one's pretty saturated at this point with emerald. And I'm just going to use the khaki green somewhat straight up. And then I will go back and add some of the other emerald. Now the thing about painting, if you're new to mixed media art, um, or new to painting at all so much of it is intuitive right so we can plan we can you know decide you know what colors we're going to use we could do all this but sometimes just seeing it and even when I'm not doing lives I have to say I record myself or at least I watch in a camera because when I look back I'm able to see my own artwork and I can see it how you're seeing it and it's it's truly very helpful and a remarkable experience to see your own artwork being created sort of live as you're painting um, because you will see things that you you don't see when you're looking at it straight on so a lot of times um, I will hear instructors telling their 
their artist to, you know, look at your art in a, in a mirror every once in a while. And that got me to thinking that, you know, because it is a good practice to do that. But it did get me to thinking, that's much better, see, um, that if I were to do this um, on, on camera and look at the camera and see what you see, then it would give me a different perspective. And it really does help. And so if it's something that you are dabbling with, um, you know, making art, painting, anything like that, I encourage you to just turn the camera on and just, you don't have to go live with it if you're not comfortable with that. Just, but just make yourself, just video yourself. And even if you never watch it back and you can see yourself painting, it really helps to see the artwork from the viewer's perspective. Okay. Let's smush some of that green back in there because it feels just a little off back there. Okay, also I think I'm going to make um, maybe another leaf in here. And I think that leaf is actually going to get some black put into it just so that we can balance out that frame. Okay, so the frame was also gold before, just so you know, and then just before... Um, we came live, I decided to add some black to the frame. There. All right, much better. And then that color that I don't even know what we want to call, I'm going to bring that into this petal. Yep. Now that I see its reflection, it's very happy with a little bit of other color in it. And we still have some of the residual red popping through there. So I'm just going to go ahead and take care of those. Okay. There we go. A little highlight here and there. Remember how loose and fun this is and keeping it this this loose and this fun? It is really important to not um, be so strict on yourself about the the guidelines or the the paint by number lines, especially with this hibiscus design, is that we're able to really just loosen it all up. All right, that's looking great. Um, okay, so now this coat of this Zen color is, is almost dry, so I'm gonna go ahead and give it another um, little coat. I'm also gonna touch up the black frame. And the reason for that is that it's throwing me off a little bit to see the other colors on it. And I think that's gonna help me determine where I wanna place some more black color. So I'm just gonna dry. My brush, pick up some of the black, touch up this frame. There we go. And then on the inside, not that you can see it, but when I take my picture, you'll appreciate afterwards, you'll appreciate how a little bit of, of the messy paint on the inside is really distracting from the overall look. Okay, so that's going to help me place the darker color now. So I think I'm going to follow in behind, like maybe where some of the leaves are back here. And I'm going to deposit some black. Remember, I'm just trying to anchor this a little bit because before they had dark, if you look at the original picture, they had dark, almost black on one side and then red on the other. So I'm just going to put in a little bit of that darkness back in here, which will help 
ground and anchor this. And I'll do a little bit at the top too. There we go. And then a little bit in here. So that graphite pencil really helps as well. Put some of the black details back in. That's looking good. I think you might want a little bit in here. I hope you can see that, but it looks like a little bit is really almost necessary in there. Okay, I love that. So I apologize again, again, again for not being able to live chat with you guys. I really have to solve this problem so that when I am doing my lives, we can talk to one another. This is only my second live with Aussie Decor Transfers and already I haven't got one right yet. So <laughs> one of these days I'm bound to get it right. And it doesn't help that my phone's not working right now. So again, um, I will follow up with any questions that you have later. Once I'm able to see the replay, I will get back to um, you with any questions you have. There we go. Okay, so there we go. I think when I look in the in the reflection, I think it's it's great. I'm loving it, and I think it's looking nice and loose. The blue, or that Zen color I was telling you that I was using, is ready, I think, for a second coat. And so I'm going to just go back in with that and give it a nice... loose coat and the colors as you can see if you are familiar at all with this um, hibiscus you'll know that it is absolutely stunning in the red and the yellow well the red background yellow hibiscus and that is what the product is called but for my art and for my decor sensibilities I just wanted to make it a little more farmhouse if you will so um it's it's trending right now and it's trending in in my home as well and i think this painting will just be a bit more suitable to my decor right now now the round shape also adds something really interesting right and beautiful to this flower so if you are, you know, when I say think outside the box, it's just think outside the parameters because the parameters of this were rectangular and I went ahead and changed it such that it would be round. And by doing that and by adding the modeling paste on the side, I got rid of those harsh lines which dictated the boundaries of it, right? So by changing up the shape, it really does become a bit more, um, a little more contemporary maybe. So anyway, I'm really happy with that so far. Now, because I am mixed media, I just, it wouldn't be a painting for me unless I added some collage. So I'm gonna go and throw some collage in there. And I have some photocopies always nearby me of, of uh, images and things like that. So I think I might, because it's a, a painting of a flower, I think I'm going to throw in a bird. Yep, I think I'm going to do a bird because birds, for me, go with flowers. It's just, they go hand in hand. So when I do collage, um, I generally wait for things to dry, but because we are live, we don't have time for literally to sit and watch paint dry. Um, so I am going to show you how I collage anything and I'm just using a Mod Podge so just like a any type of an adhesive Mod Podge works great for me and I'm doing glue to glue techniques you'll hear me think uh, or speak of this often it is the way that you prevent air bubbles when you do collage so you put the glue on the back of the paper 
and the thinner the paper the better so this is just a photocopy of um, a line image or a line drawing of a chickadee I believe I've enlarged and just printed on my printer so it's just on printer paper and you want to get the glue on the back so that's glue on one side so now for the glue to glue part we have to put the glue where the image is going to go now normally I would have this dry so I wouldn't be smushing this so let's just pretend that the glue goes approximately there but I'm just moving my wet paint around so we're going to ignore that rule just for today and I'm going to go ahead and place the bird and I'm going to use my blue squeegee for this and I'm going to push out very gently on it but I'm going to push out any excess glue now when you have glue underneath and you have glue on top then the beauty about that is that glue to glue because neither side is dry and over thirsty and sucking up all the the moisture from these things both sides will collectively work together to provide um, a nice flat surface without air bubbles so if you have you know done any collage work in the past and you say you always get air bubbles that is how you avoid them is glue to glue and then push out any excess glue I just use a baby wipe um, to go back in and dab around it and collect any excess glue that may come out. I didn't put glue underneath this, so I actually don't have anything coming out right now. Um, but that is basically how it's done. So I'm going to use my, um, uh, I guess I'll just use a smaller brush. So I, I did, wasn't able to put glue on the branch so I'll just do it right here and then stick it on. It was just too fine while I was holding it in my hand. But I'm going to make sure everything is glued down nicely. And then now what I'm going to do is um, you can see my image doesn't have the finished branch, right? So it, the image, I just cut a little bit of white paper. Um, or of the white paper, but now I actually want to paint the branch in. So I'm going to use colors that exist already in my palette, and then if I want to introduce brown or something later, I'll do that. But basically, I'm just going to pick up what I have. So a little green, a little white, and I'm just going to paint in a branch. There we go. And I'm going to go over top of the existing branch and then I might give it an offshoot as well. There we go. Now I'm going to go over again the existing branch, pick up a bit more color. And this branch is much bigger than the other one. And it's going to go across. And down and then it continues on the bottom again I'm not going for some kind of you know really crazy realism here this is my very loose rendition of a hibiscus as is my very loose rendition of a branch so I'm not gonna lose any sleep over how accurate my branch is but I just want it to be in the same I need a finer brush now because I've got I'm losing a bit of the width up here so that's okay so I'm just going to pick up some white and have you look exactly where I want the highlight on the branch to go and what I mean by that is maybe you won't notice that I've made my little bit of the black and put a shadow on the other side just like I have a highlight on one side I have a shadow on the other side and then I'll use my graphite pencil 
All right, I'm going to go back in and I'm going to give it a few wiggles, if you will. So there we go. I'm actually scratching right through the surface. So this is where I'm going to give the branch just a little bit of realism, if you will, a little bit of a little bit of vitality, just a few lines. Now I can see that there are so many of you watching, but I am unable to communicate with you. So last time I'm going to apologize because you're probably getting tired of it, but I really do wish I could communicate with you. Um, so do share your questions, your comments in the chat. And then after this presentation is over, Here we go. And then maybe you want to leave one up there. Okay. So I think I am happy with my overall painting. So I'm going to bring the camera a little more face on so that you're able to see. And then we don't have to finalize anything other than me just doing a tiny little recap. I can go back in now and I can add little, you know, little details, little um, marks here and there, a little bit of paint, a little highlighting, a little bit of shading, a little bit of shadowing. If I feel like it, if I think it's good, then I'm just going to leave it as is. I'm just adding a little bit of what I call dirty water. So this is just my, my black paintbrush had some water in it. So I'm just going to add a little bit of a shadow here and there. And I think that is it. So I would maybe go back in and add some, some details to the bird, but I kind of like the black and white contrast against everything that's happening here. If you're one of those who really enjoys like a more hand painted look, then you can go in with um, some paint and you can actually just add like a few hand painted brush marks to the bird so that you sort of blur the lines between imagery and hand painted quality. I myself love the juxtaposition of the two. I think it looks really um, authentic when you don't hide the fact that you're using digital or printed imagery in your mixed media because it actually, in my opinion, again, <laughs> it actually shows a beautiful um, comfort with yourself and your ability to blur those lines of reality and, um, and sort of make-believe. So I think that is it for today, kids. I really do apologize. Last time, I keep saying that, but it is the last time. Um, next time you see me live will be in two weeks on Friday. And again, I really hope to be able to show you something that has um, the ability to chat so we can talk together. Today went a little long, and um, but I hope you got a lot out of it. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in two weeks. Bye-bye.